Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create and set up multiple checkpoints that the player can then respawn at. So if I were to walk forward, you can see we have this pole here, this is a checkpoint. If I go up to it, you can see we have a nice simple flag animation raising up which just says checkpoint. If I walk away and press 1, which kills the player, we will then respawn back at this checkpoint. If I go up here, we have another checkpoint. This again does the same animation. Let's walk away from it. If I then die, you can see that we're going to respawn at this checkpoint. And again, I can also re-enable this checkpoint if I wanted by going up to it. So I die and I'll go back to this one. However, if you want, you can make it so the checkpoints are just a one-time thing. You can't go back like so. And again, we have another one over here just as another example, but you can have as many of these in your level as you like. There is no limit onto it. And also if I were to close this and go back in just to reset so we have no checkpoints. If the player were to die before reaching a checkpoint, so you can see none of these checkpoints are activated. If I then die, we're just going to respawn back where the player started. So it's not going to break. The player will just go back to the start and the beginning of the game until they reach a checkpoint. And then that is where they will spawn. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to set up our respawning code inside of our game mode blueprint. So what we're going to do to get to our game mode is go to control space to open the content browser, third person blueprints, BP third person game mode, or if you're using your own one, use that one as well, obviously instead. In here, this is some very simple code. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this off of begin play. So we'll hold down P and left click to get event begin play or you can just right click and search for it and it will take you there if you've already used it. Then we're going to right click under this and get player character as we want to make sure we are doing this for the current player character. Out of this, we're going to get class and right click this, promote it to a variable, naming this player class. And we're doing this so we can get a reference to what class the player actually is or what their blueprint is so that we know what we need to respawn later on. Then we're going to drag out of get player character again and we're going to bind event 2 on destroyed. So when the player character is destroyed it's going to fire off an event and that's because when the player dies we're going to destroy the actor. So I'm just going to double click this here to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized and then we'll come out of the event of this bind event here and we'll just add a custom event and I'm going to name this one on destroyed. So when the player character is destroyed, this event is going to fire off. And you can see we have destroyed actor here, which is as well, which is the player. So you can use that if you want to in your code, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to drag this over here and again, and again get some root nodes by double clicking. Then I'm going to hold down D and left click to get a delay, connecting that into the custom event here. I'm going to set the duration of this to two, but you can set this to absolutely whatever you like or not have it at all. All this is doing is it's deciding how long it's going to take until the player respawns. So once the player dies, it will take two seconds before they respawn. Otherwise, it's just immediate and it might not look that good. So you can have this delay here to whatever you like. Or if you want, what you can do instead is not bind this to an bind this event to the player being destroyed. You can do this through a menu instead and just call this custom event through a button press on a menu. And that's very simple. You just on button press in the menu, you just cast to the game mode and call this event here. Everything after this will be the exact same. But I'm not doing that today. So what we're going to do after this delay here is get a spawn actor from class with the class being the player class variable we just created a moment ago. And then the spawn transform, we're going to right click, promote to variable and name this spawn transform. And then we're going to move this down here like so. So this is now going to spawn the player in two seconds after they have died. So once the player has spawned in, we want to make sure that obviously they're possessed. Because at the moment it's not a player, it's just a character. So to make sure the player can control them, we're going to right click, get player controller. And out of this, we're going to get possess. With the target being get player controller and the in pawn being the return value of our spawn actor. So the actor, i.e. the character that we just spawned in, is now going to be possessed by the player controller so the player can actually control this character. And that is the code done for respawning. 
However, there's a few other things we want to do. So for example, if the player now dies before reaching a checkpoint, they're gonna spawn at this spawn transform here, which is 000, if we were to compile it, we can see 000, which might be fine for you, but it probably also won't be because that might be under the map in a wall or whatever. So what we want to do is make sure that this spawns back to where the player first spawned in, which will probably be the start of your level. So what we're gonna do is hold Alt and drag this in here to set the spawn transform. And we're gonna do that after bind event to on destroyed. So it's doing this off of event begin play. And then we're gonna drag out of our get player character and get actor transform. And that actor transform is gonna go into this spawn transform here. So again, when the player first spawns in, i.e. at the start of the level, that is gonna be their current checkpoint respawn. Alternatively, you can just put a checkpoint at the beginning of the level if you want, but I think this is a much better and more secure way of doing it, which means that it won't and can't break. And also, this is only going to work once. So once the player respawns, this code is now redundant because it's a different, uh, because it's now binded to a different actor and a different player character. So we just need to run this code again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and right click and add a custom event and I'm just gonna name this one respawn. And then this is gonna connect into the set player class we have here. So it's just gonna run all of this code again. Well, it's gonna set the player class and the bind event, which means when our new player dies, it's gonna fire off this event to respawn again. So after possess, all we need to do here is call the function or the custom event we just created called respawn. And again, you can name that whatever you like. If respawn doesn't make too much sense for you, you can name it whatever you like. But this is the code done for being able to respawn the player once they have died. So that's great, we can now respawn. What we need to do now is respawn at our checkpoint, which we have set. So what I'm gonna do is compile, save this and close it. And then I'm gonna create our checkpoint blueprint. So let's hit control space to open up our content browser. We'll go back to content. I'll right click, I'll create a blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm gonna name this one BP underscore checkpoint. In here, we'll open this up straight away. And then what I'm gonna do is because I've got my flag animation in here, I'm gonna add in some static meshes. So I'm gonna add static mesh, and I'm gonna add in my flagpole. So I've got flagpole here, and I'm gonna add in another static mesh, and I'm gonna add in the actual flag. Now you can see I've got this positioned exactly where I want it. So what I'm gonna do, just because I want it by default to be not up, I'm just gonna move this down so it's underneath the floor, which for me is minus 200 on the Z. Again, you don't need to do this flag animation at all, I'm just doing this because I think it looks good and it's just a good way to demonstrate what we're doing. But again, not necessary in the slightest. However, what is necessary and what you do need to do is in here, add in a box collision and then scale this up to the size that you want it to be for the player to interact with it. So when the player walks into this box, their checkpoint will be set. So you can make this as big or as small as you want. But for me, I think this is perfectly fine. Then we're gonna go over to the event graph, delete these three nodes, and what I'm gonna do first is set up my flag animation, so this is, since this is very simple. I'll right click, add a custom event, and I'll name this one raise flag. Out of this, I will add a timeline, like so, naming this T underscore flag, and I'll double click this to open it up, setting the length to one, and I'll add a track with that being a float track, and I'll name this one flag track. On the track, I'll right click, add key to curve float, the time of zero, a value of zero, so it's at the beginning. Right click, add key to curve float with a time of one or the length of my timeline and a value of one as well, so it goes to the end. I'll zoom to fit and I'll right click on these and set the key interpolation to auto, just so it's a nice smooth route. So what we're gonna do is go from zero to one on this timeline, which is gonna be going from lowered to raised for our flag. And to do that, we'll go back to the event graph and we'll drag in a reference to our flag, not a flagpole, sorry, our flag, and then out of this set relative location, going into update of the timeline, and then I'll move this over a bit, come out of the flag track, which we have here, and I'll get a lerp, and we want a lerp vector, as we want to be changing the location. The return value is gonna go into new location, and what this is gonna do is go from A to B smoothly, A being lowered, B being raised. So lowered is the position it's currently in, which for me is zero, zero, minus 200. So I'll do that here. And then B is gonna be the position I want it to be in when it's raised, which for me is just zero, zero, zero. So this is now gonna work perfectly for me for raising my flag. 
So I'll select it, hit C to comment it, and just name this raise flag, perfectly like so. Now the bit that you're also going to want to do, even if you're not doing the flag bit, is right click on our box collision, add event, and add a component begin overlap. Then out of other actor, we're going to get an equal equal, comparing this to get player character. So essentially, if the player character is the actor that is overlapping this box collision, because otherwise it could be an AI or anything else walking over this, we don't want that to set and activate the checkpoint for the player. We only want to do it if the player is walking over this checkpoint. So we'll then hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into there, and we're going to connect the execution into the event. So false obviously not going to do anything. True, however, what we're going to do is right click, get game mode. And out of this, we're going to cast to our game mode, which for me is BP underscore third person game mode. And again, this is going to go into true of the branch. And as BP third person game mode, we're going to set spawn transform or whatever it is that you named it, but it's the transform that we created inside of our game mode. And what I'm also going to do here is raise flag, because again, that is what I'm doing with my current animation and my blueprint. But if you're not doing that, you don't need to do it. However, to set the spawn transform, what I'm going to do is set it to the player's transform. You can do the actor transform of the checkpoint if you want. However, I want to do it where the player is when they first interact and overlap with the checkpoint, because that way I know that it's definitely not going to be colliding with anything. There's nothing going to be in the way. It is going to, the player can go there because they are currently there. So it just means there's less chance for it to mess up. So I'll come out with the get player character down here and get actor transform, connecting that into the set spawn transform there, perfectly like so. I'll select all this, hit C to comment it, and name this set spawn point. And with that, that is it perfectly set up, setting our spawn point and activating a checkpoint as well. I'll save this and all I'm gonna do now is just add a quick way for the player to be able to die so we can test this out. So, I'll, so let me open up my third person character. So I'll go to third person, blueprints, BP third person character, and I'm not gonna set up a proper health and damage and death system. All I'm gonna do is when I press the one keyboard event, it's gonna kill the player by simply doing destroy actor. Now you can set up your own damage system properly, obviously, but all you want to make sure that you do is at the end, when the player dies, you destroy the actor, because, then, because again, that is what is triggering the death and respawn system. So let's close this and add in a few checkpoints around the map to test this out. So I'll add a checkpoint in here, I'm gonna rotate it this way so it's facing the way I like, and then I'll put one up here as well, and I'll also put one back here too. Now if I were to hit play, we should see that we're gonna spawn in at these checkpoints. So if I just die now, so if I press one, we die, and we're gonna respawn back at the beginning of where we first spawned in the player, because again, we're setting at the beginning there. If I walk over here to this checkpoint, you can see the flag is gonna be raised. If I walk away and I die, we're gonna die, and we're gonna respawn at this checkpoint perfectly like so. And again, the same thing for this checkpoint over here, so we can have more than one checkpoint. I come up here, I die, we're gonna respawn after two seconds at this checkpoint. And again, last but not least, this checkpoint up here as well, just to show it works with all of them. We can die after going to that checkpoint. And when we respawn after two seconds, it will be up at this checkpoint here. And again, you can see it's where we first entered the overlap of the box collision for the checkpoint over here. So with that, I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we wanted to do. As what I've done is we've set up a system in which the player can die and respawn, and they can also respawn at the different checkpoints that we set up in the map. And these can be absolutely anywhere and we can have as many as we want as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and our channel out a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.